the streets. Thank you. We have another question from a, a teacher, and her name is Irene. Please go ahead with your question. Good evening. My name is Irene Omangi. I am a high school teacher. My question is on education. I would like the presidential aspirants to let us know that what they will do to ensure that the children who leave primary school transit into high school. Because as we saw last week, quite a large number of those children will not get positions in secondary school. And that will mean that they will not get a basic education. What will your governments do to ensure that this problem is clearly solved? Thank you so much for that. I think on the issue of education, if we look back over the past few years in terms of enrollment, we've, we've achieved something as a nation. We have huge challenges when it comes to transition from primary to secondary, but also transition from secondary to higher education. And we're losing hundreds of thousands of students. Um, and where do they go? big issue, probably also becomes a security issue. You know, Professor Kiapi, I am looking at you. This was your docket before you resigned. Julie, the saddest day for me when I was a peer of education was the day when a little boy in Kericho County committed suicide because he didn't make the marks or enough to go to secondary school. But the reason really is that we don't have enough classes in secondary. We have been working to reduce them. Two years ago, 2,250,000 2, students dropped out of standard aid. This year, 110,000 students will not go to Form 1. What I will do if elected president, next year, I will take 3 billion Kenya shillings and go to 3,000 count district day schools and build a classroom that will take in approximately 150,000 children, and you can mop them in. You can also take another three billion and you build a laboratory. It's very, very practical. We put a proposal to Treasury two years ago. We should have done this thing two years ago, but we did, never got the budget. How do you do this and, and maintain education standards, Professor? Because what the way to maintain education standard is just to do two things. Number one, let us hire more teachers. Right now, there's a shortage in the country of 100,000 teachers. And I would like to hire 20,000 teachers every year at a bill of about 7 billion per year. And number two, we must invest in infrastructure, especially in day secondary schools and the so-called county schools. Because right now, there's a big dis disparity between national schools, county schools, and day secondary schools. Some schools have everything, others have no classrooms, enough classrooms, or even laboratories. If we invest in the physical infrastructure and teachers, the quality will begin to go up. Let's thank President Kibaki for bringing kids into the education system in terms thank of you. access. Thank you. Let me come to you, Uhuru Kenyatta, on this issue. Our, manif our manifesto on this is very clear. And I do appreciate the problem that has been mentioned because it is a problem that also contributes to a lot of the social ills that we see. And that's why in our manifesto, we have made it very clear that we want to move to a situation where no child under the age of 18 is out of either school or some training institution. And we have made it clear that we would want to continue adding the classrooms, increasing the number of teachers, as well as ensuring that we have one technical school in at least every ward in our country to ensure that those who do not make it into secondary school at least are able to be given some form of training that they could use to make a livelihood for themselves. So the basic fact is that this would not only help us um, ensure that kids remain in school, but it would also go a long way towards creating or removing the breeding ground that has been there for criminal gangs using these young men and women. You also pledge uh, things like school feeding programs, milk for children in primary school, um, talk about the tablet, the solar power tablet. How will you finance all this? Like I stated severally, and I've done in the past, I do believe there is a lot of waste in government today. We moved when I was Minister of Finance, for example, to ensure that all the fuel guzzlers that were there were removed. These are monies that we could save to put into more uh, serious issues like 
feeding our children in school, like ensuring no child is out of school before the age of 18. For example, what we are moving towards right now is a Ministry of Foreign Affairs that is better staffed, better equipped with professionals. There is no reason for every single conference to be attended by a minister from another department. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs, properly staffed, properly equipped, can handle that on behalf of government. There's major savings to be made there from all the unnecessary travel that is made out of this country um, severally. And turn this and put it into more useful uses that benefit the people of this country. Peter, let me come to you on this. And, and you've already heard Professor Ole Kiapi and Uhuru Kenyatta. What, what, what are you going to do that's different and that uh, is better than what they're offering the Kenyan citizens? Well, Julie, first, we must look at quality of our education. It is one thing to give quantity education. is another to guarantee quality education. Because what you're looking from our kids is the outcome. What do they get out of school? That's why I'm saying we must carry out reforms right from ECD going all the way to primary, looking for a reform process that has a continuous education so that you don't just leave a standard eight because you have nowhere to go. The statistics are quite odd. 75% of primary kids make it to secondary school. 32 only make it to campus. So at primary, you drop out 25. At secondary, you drop another 68. So you must invest in education. I do not entirely agree that we have a shortfall in teachers. We actually have poor distribution of teachers. You have areas that have more teachers, where else you have other areas that have not teachers. How would you distribute, Peter? Where would you, you be have to be fair. To you have to have equality. You have to enforce transfers of teachers to schools that do not have teachers, something that probably my brother professor should have implemented very well when he was there. But much I, I more important than that. You much, much, much more important than that. You still have a minute, Peter. You still have a minute. I'm going to allow you 20 <coughs> seconds because he's been in the ministry and feels he needs to respond to this. The professor. president himself ordered us, and we did all the rationalization that could be done. And there is no, no ra rationalization you can do to bridge a gap of 100,000 teachers. It's a shortage which is known. It is known in government, it is known in treasury, and there is nothing my brother can do to bridge that. You must just hire and from, teachers. And from the words of a teacher? The former permanent secretary, as, as, uh, I quote him, I look for seven billion to pay teachers. Uh, how do you want to pay, as proposed by the Salaries Commission, 14.73 billion to 3,650 3, officers, and you pay seven billion to 500,000 teachers. Is that fair? A, a, a very important question raised, and I think we'll come back to that with each and every person to speak about salaries and allowances and what we've been seeing, the trends we've been seeing in government. So Peter, uh, Professor says we, we have a huge shortfall of 100,000. He has not addressed the issue of distribution of teachers. I am making it absolutely clear that there are some areas in our country that have more teachers, whilst there are some areas that are lacking teachers, the distribution has never been effected efficiently. But what I'm saying in our reform plan, we must invest from ECD, continuation from 38. We have proposed a national polytechnic for each county because we'd like to see fourth formers who leave go into polytechnics because we converted our polytechnics into university colleges and forgot that there is a high rate of dropouts. Two, we must agree to invest in our education system. In the last five years, the government has borrowed more than had been borrowed in the last 26 years in terms of total aggregate. Our debt was 700 billion in 2007, it's now 1.8 trillion. We have not invested in real education using the money that we have borrowed. Let me come to you, uh, Musalia, and you can see the debate happening here. Is there, in your opinion, a shortfall in the number of teachers? Is it about redistribution? And also the issue has been raised of the huge gap in, in pay and how can you morally support uh, what's been going on within our, our, our government? Well, I, <clears throat> I must say that uh, one of the things that uh, is now a constitutional issue is the fact that basic education is up to the fourth form level. And really, if we have to implement the constitution and live up to it, we must start as a nation preparing ourselves to provide support so that our young children can get to fourth form level uh, through the public support. That is a must. 
we must do that. That, that is a commitment your government that is, is a making, commitment my to government take them right through till fall. Now, four. one of the things that we, we, we must look at is that the whole idea of financing our social sector, and education is one of the pillars under our social sector, we must remember that it is comprehensive, it is holistic. We must manage the economy well in order to be able to provide the resources that are going to go here. For instance, there are issues that are pending about privatization in this country. We can raise a lot of resources by carrying through the whole process of privatization in this country and be able to assign those resources to areas like education. Which institutions are you talking about? For instance, we could still privatize the, the, the port of Mombasa. It can be done. We can still look at even the privatization of the airport's authority. All these are issues that can be done. They can be managed uh, efficiently, they can be turned around, and they can generate a lot of revenue that can go into uh, the, the, the institutions like the health and education. And to me, these are the areas that I would focus on in order to start raising resources that I can divert to be able to cater for the education of our children. Let's be a bit more specific with education and when you say investment and there's only a few seconds left, mm -hmm. but give us some specifics of what pledges you are making to this nation on At education. At this point in time, I'm saying that the money government is going to provide free and compulsory education to up to form fourth form. form level. That allows us to have our children in school longer Otherwise, if we continue to guillotine them at standard eight, we are putting them, condemning them to child labor, which is again another breach of the law. Okay. So we must keep them there longer, and after that, be able to invest in our polytechnics to allow them to gain some skills for those who do not get to the university.